Hello, I'm Tim Blanks. Uh, I'm live from BOF Voices at the Soho Farmhouse in the freezing cold English countryside. Today was the first day of Voices, and as usual, there was an absolute mountain of material to absorb. It was stimulating, it was educational, it was absolutely inspiring. And here's a little montage of clips. We are back! Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Voices 2021. This is BOF's annual gathering for big thinkers. I believe on the principles, the values of respect, compassion, dignity, fairness for myself and for others. Disclosure plus resonance multiplied by permeability equals intimacy. Of course, you can't really say out loud that you don't care about sustainability. That would be a quick way to get disinvited from Fashion Week, lose your seat in the front row, or be shunned at the cocktail bar. Don't go backwards, always forward. Demna's vision. So it's something that's going to look um, um, modern. I like to continually evolve the brand forward. And the only way you do that is with new ideas and fresh ideas. Of the perhaps six million species of fungi that exist on the planet, only about 8% have been described by humans. Off, oh, well, leg open, back, through, down, round, backwards, turn. Fantastic, well remembered. Okay, great. From there, okay, okay. We're doing all right. I think we, we might make more premieres live. It feels good, yeah, it, makes, it feels good to do that. I'm gonna do that more. Our job is to be the disruptors the diviners of change. Our job is to imagine differently and make it true. Uh, joining me right now are my guests tonight, Janaya Future Khan and Halima Arden. Now, Halima is a Voices veteran, mm -hmm. but this is Janaya's first time. So obviously, I'm very curious, what did you think of your, uh, your first day at Voices? I didn't know it was this cool. Like, it's... it's it's a learning space, it's an incubator, um, and oftentimes these kinds of, you know, it's, it, conferences can be quite dull. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very stark, they're dull learning environments, they're dated, and this is far from that. This is actually an incubator um, that discusses innovation, futurism's connection, and that has everything to do with me and everything to do with each and every one of us. So, I, I mean, it's just such an absolute pleasure to be here. We don't call it a conference, let's call it a gathering. Yes. It sounds a little <laughs> more right. informal. Yes. You, you, actually, your, your, your um, segment today was one of the ones that I carry away with me. And you said something, I, I, I said to you, the line I took away that I will have tattooed on my heart is, the mind is the muscle of the soul. <laughs> and I think that kind of applies mm. to the whole day, because the day is about thinking. The yes. day is about what Wayne McGregor, the incredible choreographer we saw in that clip, calls right. physical intelligence, mm -hmm. uh, thinking and action together. Yes. And um, I mean, that's what I took away. What did you take away? There's a, there's a, a, a sort of recurring, when we think of gathering, right? There's, we think of circles. Mm -hmm. um, when MacArthur was talking about circles, and circular sort of models. I, that was incredible to me because that is precisely the, it's, I mean, that's that circle, that spiral, it's something that's constantly reflected back at us. And, you know, when we talk about the revolution and changing this society as we know it, if we think of society right now, it's an hourglass. Mm -hmm. If we really think about it, it's that it's, you've got this really clunky, dated notion of like whiteness as a top of the hourglass, and it's supposed to be gradations of privilege within that. It's very dull, doesn't encompass human experience. And at the bottom, you have something that uh, Asada Shakur calls a lower archy. And that is, you know, every person of color by proximity to whiteness. So at the very bottom, you have black and indigeneity. And, and that is a really quick summation of the kind of stru social structure that we live in. And I think people think that the answer is to flip it. And that's equality, that's equity. 
and it's not mm. because that, it has nothing to do with um, with something that's fluid and alive. But if we think of spirals, I think of penguins. Mm. And in the Antarctic, penguins, they locate themselves in, the, in a spiral and the ones on the inside are warm and the ones on the outside are cold. And gradually over time, the penguins on the outside move in and the penguins on the inside move up. And that's how they stay alive. And isn't that such a beautiful metaphor for what the human experience should be? There are people, regardless of identity, that need more in certain spaces, that need to be warm. Um, and that's that sort of coldness, it keeps us sharp. It's where our best ideas come from, but it shouldn't come from desperation. It should come from knowing um, that there's something communal in the exchange. It, uh, it keeps us alive. And so when I see that sort of idea again of like circular use mm -hmm. and cycles, I just, and the spiral, uh, mm -hmm. it's incredibly inspiring. And what do you think of it presented in this context, you know, ideas like that where they're bouncing off each other, yes. where you get complementary thought. I mean, we had everything today. I, 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 I want to talk about I want to talk about Merlin Sheldrake and speaking about mycelium, speaking about mycology, mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, mind blowing. Yeah. So Halima, what what was it? What stood out for you? Oh my goodness! So this is my second year back at BOF Voices. And I was just telling my colleague, Katie, how every time I leave so inspired, so refueled, and just so excited to, you know, just, it's amazing. I'm blown away. And today I learned so much from mushrooms to the business of fashion <laughs> to just amazing stuff. And I can't believe you guys brought together some of the biggest industry leaders. And to, like, be together for three days, it's just, it's incredible. Can you apply, do you think you can apply what you learn here in your life, that when you take away what you've heard, mm -hmm. that actually it does make you a better person? I think so. I mean, I was so excited to try some of those mushroom um, powders. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, when he was talking about anxiety and all, like, the health benefits and how I believe it's 53% um, mushrooms, like, we share the same DNA. Mm -hmm. And so that's just stuff that I would have never in a million years would have thought about, but it shows you how we're all interconnected. And so I'm definitely going to be taking a lot of stuff and implementing it into my life. Actually, it would be a lovely moment to look at Merlin Sheldrake mm -hmm. because he he will stay with me. As, yes. as, as he'll stay with me in my dream. So mm -hmm. let's have a, a look at Merlin. So when we think of fungi, we normally think of mushrooms. But mushrooms are just the reproductive structures of fungi, the place where they produce spores, which help to disperse to helps, helps them to disperse. Most fungi live most of their lives as mycelium, branching, fusing networks of tubular cells. And mycelium is how fungi feed. Animals find food in the world and put it inside their bodies. Mycelium put their bodies inside their food. Fungi put their bodies inside their food using mycelium. Listening to nature, listening to nature explained like that. The yeah. poetry. Yes. The poetry of my, mycelium. When you talk, when you were talking about activism, um, activism is seeing the world as it is, not as we've been told. Mm -hmm. What does it take to have that clarity of vision? Oh, it takes a lot. Yeah, but I would have thought so. What I want everyone to understand is that the system that we live in takes more. Mm -hmm. And I think when you are told that you are a small person um, because of the skin you were born into or the family or whatever, um, and I do think that regardless of identity, that society does this thing where it really wants people to shrink and contort themselves to fit into a status quo because a small people is a voiceless people. Um, and I think we forfeit so much of who we are because we don't actually think we're worth very much at all. And I think regardless of where I've been, who in power I've met, everybody feels the same way, that they don't have power to change the industry that they're in. They don't have power to green light the ideas that they have. Um, and I thought, oh, this is something that transcends um, identity as, as I know it. And so when I, when I hear about something like mycelium, and that I think of, okay, it's, it's penetrating. It becomes a part of the, it's almost like a symbiotic thing. It becomes a part. And I thought, well, that's, that's essentially what I want to do mm -hmm. with people. I want them to become a part of me. 
and I want to become a part of them. Um, and it's, it's like uh, when we learn information, it's an awakening. And I want to remind people, I want to remind people that you don't fully know yourself yet. You don't fully know yourself yet. And I think that's an extraordinary thing to live knowing that there's still so much more to learn about you and about the world. And the call to action is a reminder in the way that these, these systems, these, even these fungi systems, these mycelium systems function together, we have to function together. That is the antidote to capitalism. It's the idea that there are parts in us, and maybe the most godlike parts, whatever that means to people, uh, that can only be accessed through others. So the, the point of being alive is to know who you are. And the only way that you can fully know who you are is to be in service to something greater than yourself. And that requires collaboration. Are you surprised that a, that an, a gathering which is technically kind of based around the fashion industry would be offering this platform for these thoughts? Mm -hmm. I know that you've toyed with fashion, you've modeled. Halima modeled and didn't have the most pleasant experience yes. and took a back seat. I'm curious as to how, how you look at it now, your experience. You know, <clears throat> I love the fashion community. It's definitely one of the most creative space I've ever worked in, and I've had many odd jobs. <laughs> Modeling being probably the oddest job I've ever had, but it was so rewarding. And when I did take a step back, I noticed that young girls all over the world, Somali, Muslim, young hijab-wearing girls, their parents were DMing me and emailing me and saying, you need to get back in the game. You know, you are our source of representation. And it, it's so heartbreaking that I'm literally, you know, one of the most visible hijab-wearing right. women. You know, I feel like we should have more. And with time, I know that will change. But I didn't want my community to think that I backed down and, you know, that I gave up. But do I want to go back to modeling in the traditional way, like runway, for example? Probably not. Mm -hmm. um, but can I still be in these spaces while remaining true to myself? This um, event is an example of that. Right. You know, the fact that I'm not on a runway, I'm actually speaking. And my mother, you know, she taught me, like what we were talking about earlier, it's what's in your head, mm -hmm. not what you look like. And so I love that I could be heard and have a voice and not just be you know, some, something to look at. I mean, this is an interesting illustration of the power of fashion, yeah. that, the, the power of the role model mm -hmm. in fashion. Mm -hmm. This is what I thought you did really brilliantly. I, I mean, it's very hard to be unmoved mm -hmm. by, by what you were talking about. But talking about it in this context, do you think it gives it more power because it seems more disruptive, perhaps? I, you know, if you had, if Tim, if, you had asked me this three years ago, it'd be a very different answer. Um, I think that the fashion industry, for those who are outside of it, is quite mysterious. And I don't think it can be anymore. By the way, I am someone who always intends to be mysterious, and then I'm the person at home at the end of the night, like, why did you say that you're supposed to be? <laughs> um, well, we know right now that the, uh, the democracy um, that has been aspirational, I would say, but the democracy that we live in is, it's eroding. Um, government structures are sort of failing us and corporations, brands are actually, we're, we're needing them to take a stand more and more because culture shifts policy. Um, and I've seen that fashion world in its response to, in the last few years and the consolidation of power across the right and with bigotry and everything else, come up with new messaging, talks about revolution and my body, my choice and free. And I, and it, and I, and I you know, in the past two years, behind every brand and every corporation is people. And there are always people who are resisting and always people who want to do incredible and meaningful work that moves past, I think, um, uh, sort of antiquated art structures around mystery and are like, no, this needs to be demystified. We are, we are part of the people. And I think streetwear really brought these worlds together. Um, and of course, the passing of Virgil, I think, was, uh, is, is um, you know, heartbreaking for, on so many levels. But a new model was created out of that, that we, are, we can be a, a voiceful and a leaderful people um, collaborating across industries 
towards greater change. And I and I think that the call to action for so many of these um, of of so many people in the industry is to do something meaningful for everyday people outside of what is considered traditional luxury. You know, it it strikes me after today that that there there is an enormous opportunity yes. mm. to bring opposites together yes. or to it, it really is i mean here we're talking about humans but we're also talking about technology that that was the theme of the day it was yes. sort of art and science humankind and technology that was the overriding thing um I'm, I've always been a little bit of a pessimist about stuff like that because I'm quite a Luddite when it comes to technology. <laughs> but Wayne McGregor, at the end of the day, brought together art and science yes. in the most lyrical way by, by, by mapping with artificial intelligence the movements of his dancers. Right. He's creating this dictionary of human movement, this library of human movement. I thought it would be really nice just to look at a little clip of, of what he told us today. Yeah. So many of you have probably seen these amazing motion capture systems where you, um, you see seen it in movies. You know, we would work with that on something like Harry Potter or Fantastic Beasts where they put dots on your body. It only actually takes 15 dots moving for us to recognize you are you, right? 15 dots, nothing else. No facial features, nothing else. And that's really interesting that actually we are kind of hardwired to be able to understand biologically how people move and understand the specifics of them. You know what it's like when you see a friend miles away in a, in a bar, you just know by the way they stand. And that's what's been really weird about all of this Zoom time, is we don't have any of this lower body stuff, which is so critical to the way in which we understand and process what people are feeling and thinking in the moment. So um, I just think that's, that's a really fascinating area for choreographers to work in. How does that resonate with you? That, that it almost seems like we're deliberately restricting ourselves, that we're not open to everything that we're capable of. That's right. Yes. Um, I went from feeling people, connecting with real people in real time to a screen. Um, and it's very difficult to convey ideas of community and things that challenge people across the screen. And there's a way that there's a, a collapse on the, there's the digitization of our lives. And what I'm seeing in movement, in fashion, in any kind of art and in activism, which in itself is becoming an industry, um, there's a, there's a co coalescing mm. uh, and a collapsing uh, where we're all sort of in this together. So those movements are going to be the very things that inform authenticity in the metaverse, um, you know, in this new sort of cyber world, because, you know, here we are, we're sitting with our microphones and we have, you know, our phones on us and everything else. We can access infinite content. What's going to be most interesting and what I'm most interesting about what I took, interested in and what I took from this is what are we paying attention to? That's going to be the thing. Mm -hmm. that, because, yes, as we learned today, there's a, that we are the person that we are, whether we're in the metaverse or in real time. Mm -hmm. What are we going to give our attention to and how? Because the metaverse, like the internet, it can be something really pure and beautiful and something very ugly, and it's accelerating the best and the worst parts of us. But it's also, are we going to be looking to it for escape as the world collapses as we know it? Right? I don't want to be so fatalist, but it's changing rapidly. We're going to find ourselves more inclined to be somewhere more pleasant. Is that what the metaverse is going to be? I think that depends on what we pay attention to. Well, um, I'm very sorry. We have, we could, if we start, if we start on that train of thought, <laughs> yes. we're going to be traveling to the end out. of the night, the <laughs> end of the track. We're going to be on that one. Uh, thank you both so much. Um, I'll see you in the metaverse, mm -hmm. uh, yes. maybe next year. <laughs> yes. yes. And and thank you for your insights today. Of and really, it was wonderful to see you both. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thank you. Yeah. And good night from Voices. <laughs>